Hello everyone, this is Justin Mitlick from StellarMate, and this is a quick guide to using PHD2 with Ecos. So to get started, let's go ahead and edit our profile. I will edit my observatory profile. Let's go to guiding and change it to PHD2. For the host name, we need to put the same host name as our StellarMate. In my case, I renamed my uh, my host name for my Stellar Mate from Stellar Mate Local to Icarus by the Local, and it's really recommended to run PHD2 on Stellar Mate and not on another PC because then it's quicker to process the guiding images. And so I'll be using the same host name here. I'll just be copy and paste. So for most user, this will be Stellar Mate Local here and Stellar made that local also for the host name for PHD2 because PHD2 will be running on Stellar made. And that's pretty much what you need to do as far as the profile goes. Let's click Save. And now let's just simply start the profile, even though we haven't configured PHD2 yet, but let's not worry about that right now. Now, if we connect it, now if we go to the um, to the guide tab here, we can see that PHD2 is not connected yet because we didn't run it. Now the next step is we need to go to VNC and we need to start PHD2 remotely. So I logged in through WebVNC and just double click on PHD2 to configure it. So now we have the first light wizard. Let's click next. It's asking about our guide camera. And in my case, I'll be using the Starlight Express. So click here and choose Indie Camera. Is the camera connected to the PC? So, so BHD2 is running on Stellar Mate and my camera is connected to Stellar Mate. So that answer is yes. And see, it's already connected to uh, the ND server. Now let's just select the camera driver. It's going to be the load star and just press OK. Next, it's going to ask us about the mount. Now, if you're guiding through the camera, so if, if I have an ST4 cable connected from my uh, load star to the mount, then I would use on camera. But in my case, I want to guide directly to the mount itself. So I'll be using ND mount. And the same question is, is the mount connected to SolarMate? Yes. What is the mount name? And this is the mount. Press OK. Press Next. Adaptive optics, none. Next. I don't want to build a dark library right now. So I'll, let me just call this JASM. And now we're done from this. Let's go back to Ecos and just go here and press connect. And that's pretty much it. We're now connected to PHD2. And now we can um, start guiding. So let me unpark here and let me go somewhere first. So um, let me go to... Uh, Say, for example, not Veal Nebula, but Veil Nebula. And let me click Center and Scope. And the mount is going there. Need to configure PH2 to auto start when Stellar Mate starts, and then you, need, you don't need to configure anything the next time because it's already configured. So this is only the, for the first time. So let's let's go uh, to Ecos and then let's just simply press guide. And now we're just waiting for PH2 to select a star and to do its calibration. Now we can change some options right here. If we click on options, click on guide, you can change, for example, the dithering options. 
you can say select external guide frames. So in this case, we will receive the guide frames from PHD2. This is going to make things a bit slow, so I don't really recommend it. It actually gives us a warning right here that we must change uh, restart case stars for this to take effect, but we don't need to do it. And of course, here you have the rest of the uh, options for the dithering. We can see here that the calibration started, so now we're just waiting for PHT2 to finish the step. And PHT2 can take uh, quite a bit of time until it's done. Uh, we can also change the exposure time right here and change the binning, and it will be uh, reflected in PHT2 as well. Okay, it's gonna show us some warnings. Let me just ignore that for now. I usually just use the internal guider, but a uh, few folks uh, prefer to use VHD2, so we have the option for that. Okay, so now the the guiding started, and here you can see the guiding deviations on the drift plot and also on the drift graphics. Uh, it initially had re really uh, off the scale guiding errors. I guess the, the, these, these shouldn't be here really. But now it went back to normal, and we can see it here um, swinging around the center. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now we're guiding. You can now just treat this as you treat the uh, Ecos Guider, internal guider, and uh, just proceed with your uh, captures. So you can just go here and then just capture regularly. So that's pretty much it when it comes to PHT2 uh, guiding and integration with Ecos. I hope this was clear. Clear skies.